McLaughlin here, and I gotta eat some gummy worms. I'm sorry, there's just a giant bag of them right there, and I put them within reach while filming, which was a very big mistake, because now I'm just gonna eat them while we're doing the video. It'll be great. Don't worry. Don't mind me. I'm just eating a gummy worm because I'm celebrating because I finished my first draft! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! I have finished the first draft of my second book. I can't tell you the title or anything about it yet, but it's done. Well, it's not done. It is done and also not done at the same time. One of the great conundrums and contradictions of being an author. If you've completed a long work of fiction before, or if you're just curious what it means, Finishing the first draft is in no way, shape, or form being done with writing the entire book. So, you've written the story, but now what? Now we have to revise, and then we have to revise again, and then we have to do more revisions and more revisions, and forever we revise, and then we never finish the book. Just kidding, it's not quite that melodramatic. Well, I mean, it can be that melodramatic. But let's dial it back a little bit and just talk about what it means to be done with a first draft. After you finish the first draft, there is of course a lot of work left to do. But when you finish the first draft, your first reaction might be, ah, I finished the first draft, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my life now? But also, oh my god, I'm so happy. So, wait, what was that I said about no melodrama? Oops. The first thing to do, obviously, is react. If you're feeling an emotion, feel it. It's exciting finishing a first draft. I was in a very quiet library at the time and was not allowed to scream at the top of my lungs, so I've been screeching in the privacy of my home since then. To me, one of the biggest steps, one of the biggest things to do when you finish a first draft is to absolutely 100% celebrate. Whether you're feeling deflated because of a long journey, whether you're feeling like you're on cloud nine because of the success, it is so, so, so important to celebrate that you've finished. It's a big thing. Congrats. Good job. I'm saying this as much to you as I am to me. I'm very happy that I'm done. I'm so excited. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the first draft, just in general, what my next steps are, and maybe I'll just scream some more. <clears throat> Professional. So how do I celebrate? You can celebrate however which way you please. I know someone who likes to put Girl Scout cookies in the freezer with like the inscription written on them of you just turned in your first draft and then they get to eat those cookies when they do the thing, which is an amazing tool. And it, I want cookies is what I'm saying. Where are my cookies? One thing I do is purchase celebratory snacks. These are typically snacks that I don't have very often. Maybe they're on the expensive side. Maybe they're just very sugary. Um, I try not to use those types of things as motivators while I'm writing or else I'm just going to like write a book but then also obtain a cavity and I don't really want a cavity per every book I write so. <laughs> One of the things I do is I drink a delicious bottle of sparkling white grape juice. I don't drink alcohol but I do drink. The second thing I typically buy is my favorite chocolate. For me my favorite chocolate is Ritter, oh, I dropped it. Ritter Sport. It is a German chocolate in the world food section of whatever grocery store has them near you. Not a sponsor, but open to it. The third thing I got to celebrate finishing my draft was, you guessed it, more sugar. But not just any sugar, a giant bag of Albanese gummy worms, which by the way, these gummy worms and gummy bears are the best. They're delicious. I'm talking weird, but I do quite feel strong about them. Also not a sponsor, also totally would sponsor. This is maybe too many gummy worms to eat for a single person, but I tell myself I have friends, and not just like made up friends, but real friends, and they like sugar, and they'll help me eat these. But so far, I haven't had any of them over, the friends, and I just keep eating the gummy worms. Real good. Yum, 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 yum. I also have some coffee. <sighs> so good, so good. Uh, it's decaf, I drink decaf now. Boy, do I sound exciting. I drink sparkling white grape juice, decaf coffee, and gummy worms. Boy, do I know how to party, and it's with a game of Settlers of Catan. So mostly that's how I celebrate. I screech a bit, I drink lots of sugary things, eat lots of sugary things, which makes me crash. So aside from all of the sugary sweets and madness, there are a few things I like to do after I finish your first draft. I've done it a few times now. Um, this is my second to be published book, so it's a bit different. But globally, the next thing I like to do is take a little bit of breather space from the manuscript, even if it's just a day, which it's been about a day or so so far. 
um, and then reread it and then see how you feel. And I'm doing that with the final chapters right now because I'm sending them in chunks to my freelance editor. So I have the last three chapters or 15,000 words to send her still, but she has encouraged me and I am also encouraging me to take a couple more days to reread it a few times and make sure it's as good as possible. And part of the reason I'm taking so much time is because we are very far ahead of our original schedule for finishing draft one. So I formally started working on this draft in the beginning of August. By that point in time, I had already drafted about 18 to 20,000 words, so almost a fifth of the story. But here we are at the 1st of October and I finished the second draft. That's about two months to finish the first draft, rounding between two and a half and three. So I know authors who have drafted the first draft of their book in like weeks. Not like me weeks, like eight to 10 to 12 weeks, but like three weeks. I can't even comprehend that. But it's also wildly impressive and really cool. And a lot of it just comes down to where you like to spend time in your manuscript. And so what I've noticed about myself and other authors is that the more and more books you write, the more time you start to value revision over drafting. And part of this is just, it's good to write relatively quickly. And then once you have the story down, you can fix it as much as you need to, but it has to exist in order to be fixed. It took me, I think, two years to write my first book. And then beyond that, I think it's taken me on average between like two and five months. When I wrote Nameless Queen, my first book, which comes out in January 2020, available for pre-order now, it took me about three months to write the first draft. And for this book, it's taking me about between two and three months. So my contract with my editor said to do the first draft in four months. I was giving myself more time because you have a full-time job, which I was doing a big project. I still am, quite frankly. And I didn't want to commit to a shorter date than I thought was possible. So I picked four months because I knew I could finish it in four months. I thought I could finish it in two to three, which is about what I did, but I only contractually, legally committed to what I knew I could do. Under promise and over deliver. That's how you want to play the game. Pretty much most of the time. Because if I ever start worrying that I can't meet a deadline, then all of a sudden I'm not putting my thoughts and efforts toward making a good story. I'm putting my thoughts and efforts towards panicking about a deadline. So again, we're ahead of schedule, so I'm going to take a little bit more time to try to get the ending as clean as I can get it at this point before I send it to her. And then within three weeks, she'll have sent back to me an edit letter and annotated manuscript. And then I can start revising, like really revising, like with notes and a goal and a clean big old manuscript. I say clean, it won't be clean. It'll be very note filled. <laughs> and between now and then, I'll probably start rereading it maybe once or twice. I do have a vacation, my first vacation for this entire year so far that I'm quite keen on uh, taking and reading books and relaxing and maybe not working on my book for a teeny tiny bit of time. So the long and short of it is, is that when you finish a first draft, celebrate, take a breather, and then make a plan. Take a couple days or a vacation length away from the manuscript, get some distance from it, clear your head, and then dive back in with revisions and make it even better than it is right now. I've said that and it sounds like I'm saying the first draft is good. The first draft is not good. It's not good, it's just it exists. There's some pieces of it that I'm like, yeah, I really nailed that dialogue or I think the emotional tension here is really good. And then there's other pieces where I'm like, this character disappeared for the rest of the book. Is that fine maybe? I don't know. And I'm already sort of turning things over in my head in the background in terms of how do I flesh out the town and the characters to make them more interesting, intriguing, and real? How do I make sure that the character's relationship with this secondary character starts off in the right way so that the arc for their relationship feels fulfilling and exciting and interesting? Ultimately, I think it's a Neil Gaiman quote that says, uh, revision is when you go back into the drafts and make it seem like you knew what you were doing when you wrote it. And this is a spectacular piece of advice and it's how I like to approach revision. Once I know what's going to happen later, I can start foreshadowing that earlier. All of that to say, I have finished my first draft of my second book and I'm very excited and I'm very much celebrating with way too much sugar and I can't wait to start revising but also I can wait because I'm excited to take a little bit of a break. I don't know. This, I don't know if this is the end of my drafting vlog since the drafting part is over, but 
I can continue sharing tips about how my revisions are going, the things I'm learning, the, the tools or the methods that I'm using in order to revise. Uh, if you have any questions or want to see things like that, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably going to do it anyway. But Alrighty, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it and I appreciate you. I have so much enjoyed getting to the end of the first draft of my second book. And I know I'm also going to enjoy working on revisions and polishing it up and getting it ready to share with you, to share with the world, for other people to read it. Ha! Huh, I always panic because people are going to read it, but that's what I want, even if it's terrifying and exciting. Speaking of which, don't forget, my first book, Nameless Queen, A Young Adult Fantasy of a Thief Turned Queen, comes out in January 2020 in just three short months. Panic! Don't panic. It's fine. You can pre-order it or you can just keep an eye out for it. When it comes on sale, I will be screeching. So if you hear a screech on January 7th, it's me. My book's out. I'll be screeching. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week.